I say it's a concept that is present here in Africa, but I also believe it's present in all human beings if it is allowed to thrive and to um, prosper. This is a spirit of sharing. If I have something and I can see you are suffering and it's there's something that I can give to you, which maybe um, is something I need, but I find that by giving this to you, I create a relationship with you. I create a better uh, understanding between us. Um, in Africa, where, for example, a family does not have uh, the basic necessities of life, and they are living next to another family, which actually does have a little bit more than that other family, they're quite prepared to give this family something that will help that family to start to be able to provide for themselves. I'll give you an example. If I have five cows, obviously I need the milk for myself, but there's a possibility that I could give a little calf to the neighbor who then brings up that calf and is able to get their own milk from having their own cow that they've uh, uh, grow, developed from the, the gift that I gave them. There's also a concept when uh, building a house. When your neighbor is building their house, the whole village would come together and they help one another. There's a name to that as well. They call it Ilima, where people come together, they help this one person to build their house. Then there's this feeling that we all belong together. In, in growing uh, food, again, people will come together and work together to plow the fields, to, to help one another with seed, and, and therefore the whole village enjoys from sharing what each has. So it's that kind of uh, way of living, co of coexistence. Of course, with urbanization, and I don't want to romanticize Africa. With uh, urbanization, we've begun to lose some of this uh, spirit of Ubuntu. And we are continuously trying to bring it back as we bring up our own children to try and bring it back so that a child who grows up does not want to accumulate only for themselves when the child next door doesn't even have a, a, a bed on which to sleep or doesn't even have shelter. So it's that kind of, of, of spirit. So even as we build government, we are now a democratic country in South Africa, we have encouraged everybody to participate in our uh, governing of the country, either through participating in elections. People here in South Africa value their freedom very much. So when elections come, they participate in the elections. They choose the representatives that are going to represent them in, in parliament. But we say it's not enough for them to just choose people that are going to represent them. They must continue to participate in the shaping of our policies, in the shaping of our laws, so that they continue to feel that this is their parliament. And those that they have chosen must feel they, they are accountable to those people that have elected us. But it's also important in this spirit of Ubuntu and humaneness to actually go to the, and experience what the poorest in, in the community uh, experience, even if it means actually visiting and living among them. We have a very good example here in our country where a former minister of land and agriculture went and spent a night in a shack, which is an informal uh, house, just so he could know what the people who live in this kind of situation go through. And that was important in the sense that he has been given a responsibility. The people have elected the government, and we have a minister who is there because the people have put him there. So he then sees his uh, responsibility as responding to their needs. And you, you won't know what their needs are if you, if you don't live among them, if you don't have that experience. You won't know how they feel. In the area of HIV and AIDS, for example, which is a huge problem in our country, we have a very high incidence of HIV and AIDS in South Africa. 
One of the things that has been very important in helping to change our government's position and policy on HIV and AIDS is actually to be with, with people who are living with HIV in the sense of attending their meetings, listening, listening to them. That actually changes your own position on HIV and AIDS because you begin to feel what they feel and experience what they experience.